If it seems like Canada's political parties have never been more polarized, well, a new survey suggests voters are feeling it. The Angus Reid poll is called the missing political middle, which kind of says it all. More than one-third of the responders said all federal parties have become too extreme in their views. It makes them feel politically abandoned, as well as describing themselves as being politically orphaned. That includes nearly half the people, about 47%, who place themselves in the middle of the political spectrum. 48% of those surveyed say they believe the Conservative Party has shifted to the right in recent years, while 43% say the Liberals have moved to the left. More disagreement about the NDP, with 36% believing it has stayed the same on the political spectrum, while the same number of people said it has shifted to the left. And in Quebec, half the respondents said the Bloc Québécois has moved neither to the left or the right. And this is telling. 48% of all those surveyed said they don't have an option for a party to vote for that really represents their views. So let's try and unpack some of these findings. Let's bring in Lori Williams, who's joining us from Calgary. She's a political science professor at Mount Royal University. Lori, very good to see you again. Good to see you too, Natasha. Let's talk about this, because anecdotally, I feel like this is something we've been hearing for years, but now clearly the Angus Reid poll indicates that people feel politically homeless, orphaned. There's a lack of a political middle ground. What is causing this feeling? Well, part of it is that there has been, just objectively, without looking at this poll, we know the Liberals have moved a little to the left, um, partly because of the supply and confidence agreement with the NDP or the, or, or the need to to ensure support from the NDP in, in order to maintain themselves in government, to not lose a vote of confidence. The Conservatives have been seen uh, uh, to move to the right to try to, to appeal to uh, um, folks who might otherwise vote for the People's Party of Canada. And, and we've known that's been going on for a while. But I think more than anything, what, what this re reflects is that the rhetoric that politicians are using is more and more negative, more critical, describing their opponents as extremist. And, and it's not landing very well by the looks of things in this polling. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's exactly where I wanted to head next, which is how much of this perception of being politically homeless is because the ideologies, the platforms of the parties are shifting or because the way they're being presented by political activists or the politicians themselves are becoming so aggressive? I mean, certainly both in Canada and in the United States. Well, I think it's a bit of both, but I would say more more would be attributable to that, to just, just to the polarization, the, the, uh, the rhetoric, the negativity that seems to be increasing, particularly on social media. It escalated dramatically during COVID. And, uh, and of course, many people are hoping that it will moderate somewhat, but that depends on leaders. And, and the leaders, more often than not, are using language and descriptions of one another that are quite personal, quite uh, disparaging, and, and they aren't, they aren't being, uh, being received very well. I mean, you spoke a moment ago about Pierre Poilievre. Uh, he's describing Jagmeet Singh as sellout thing, and that would be the kind of thing, let's say, a moderate voter might not find appealing. The, the problem, though, is that some people, in fact, a significant number of Canadians do find that resonates for them. And uh, Pierre Poilievre has been able to draw support from people who previously affiliated with the NDP and the Liberals. Um, and, and so really, it's up to up, uh, us as voters, uh, us as respondents to these surveys to try to send the messages as uh, strongly as we can that we don't want this sort of thing to, to continue. I'm just looking at an article from the Winnipeg Free Press. Now, in Manitoba, there's been this movement towards a new political party, which used to be the center ice conservatives. Now they're saying they don't have a political ideology. They're, quote, not left, not right, but forward. And much of what we're hearing from individuals who are affiliated with this party, but generally those who feel politically homeless, is that maybe even just a generation ago, Ideology was based around economics, wealth redistribution, how much you believed in taxation, how much the state should pay for things. But now it seems your political ideology is based on race, on gender, on identity. We hear all this stuff about culture wars. Is that contributing to the sense of being left out of the conversation? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. Part of it, too, is uh, is just the... the, the um what you're describing as culture wars often falls into that category of social conservatism. And interestingly, even here in Alberta, there are a lot of moderate conservatives or moderate voters who 
see themselves as having been orphaned as well. That that the current conservative party, the the uh, United Conservative Party here in Alberta, for many voters is not representative of where they sit. And so they there are even in conser- so-called conservative Alberta, there are lots of folks who see themselves as moderate. In fact, the majority do eighty five percent, according to common common ground surveys. Um, and they see them. Many of them see themselves as not having a political home, and some of them just stay home and don't vote. And that actually enables parties to uh, to ignore them. They don't have to worry about them voting against them. So there, there's a, a real dilemma amongst voters as to how they respond to this, because if political parties gain from this kind of rhetoric, um, then they'll continue to do it. So if they continue on this path, and a significant chunk of Canadians and Americans who see themselves in the political middle, where they just want to approach things from a moderate perspective, what are they going to do? What's going to happen to this sense of civic representation or civic culture if more and more of them feel left out? Well, there are a couple of possible possibilities. You suggested, of course, an alternative party at the center. That's a difficult thing to get started. Um, usually it takes a few election cycles for a new party to really establish itself to make a difference. The other possibility is for voters to pressure their uh, their elected representatives, the leaders of parties, members of parties, um, to move in a different direction, to respond to, to the kinds of issues that are really important to people. And I think profoundly, this is up to leaders not just the elected leaders or the leaders of the of the mainstream political parties, but it's up to leaders in the community uh, as well. And I think that more pressure um, to to represent that moderate middle could have an impact. It, it takes time, but I do think it could have an impact. If those political parties aren't benefiting from polarization, then that puts pressure on them to moderate. Okay, Laurie Williams, really good to get your perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha.